Hello, my name is Tom Holine and I'm a graduate student in the Astronomy Department at The Ohio State University. I'm also a member of the All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae, or Assassin, and today I'm going to present one of our recent discoveries. Our findings can be found in our recent paper titled Discovery and Observations of Assassin 13DB, an Exor Accretion Event on a Low Mass T Tauri Star. The Assassin survey scans the extragalactic sky visible from Hawaii roughly once every five days in the V-band. Our transient detection pipeline was triggered on September 24, 2013, and a cross-check of the transient's position in archival SDSS data revealed that the source was a red star named SDSS J0510. The star is within a few degrees of the Orion Nebula, a region of star formation, and we assume that the stars are roughly the same distance. Inspection of our data, shown here, indicate that the source brightened from a V-band magnitude of about 18 to a peak magnitude of roughly 14.1 over the span of about two weeks. We announced this discovery in an astronomer's telegram and named the source Assassin 13 DB. We triggered spectroscopic follow-up with the Magellan Echelet spectrograph on September 26, 2013 to further investigate the object. Our observations show that the spectrum of Assassin 13 DB was highly unusual. The spectrum was completely dominated by a forest of emission lines, particularly those of neutral iron, and showed almost no continuum emission. In this spectrum, none of the lines you see are noise. Everything is actual emission from the source. Investigation of the literature revealed that spectra like this are typical of a type of variable star known as an XOR, after the prototype EX lupi. XORs are typically found in a quiescent state, but erupt every few years with variable peak luminosities, amplitudes of 1 to about 4 magnitudes, and outburst durations of a few months to a year. At minimum light, XORs resemble classical T Tauri stars like the one pictured here, but at maximum light, their spectra are dominated by a hot continuum and emission lines that match quiescent absorption features. This indicates an increased level of accretion during which the material from the star's circumstellar disk is heated as it falls into the star and radiates causing the emission features seen in the spectra. The cause of these occasional outbursts is unknown, but some possibilities include a substellar binary companion, disk fragmentation, and instabilities at the disk truncation radius from the stellar magnetosphere. As XORs are much hotter in outbursts, we requested and received Swift Space Telescope observations in the optical, UV, and X-ray. We supplemented these with observations both photometric and spectroscopic from a number of ground telescopes spanning the near IR to the optical. These observations spanned about three months after the detection of the outburst, and we used the photometric data to construct a light curve, which you see here. The light curve indicates that Assassin 13DB has continued to show an increased level of emission in all observed bands throughout the period of observation, never dropping below a V-band magnitude of roughly 15.8. And if this is an XOR event, it can be expected to maintain this level of emission for up to a year. In addition, the light curve shows that the source exhibited smaller fluctuations of up to nearly a magnitude on timescales as short as several hours. These types of fluctuations are also a common feature of many XOR outbursts. In addition to new data, we also retrieved archival data from SDSS, TMAS, and WISE. In order to investigate the source further, we plugged these measurements into a fitting tool made by Robitaille et al. to estimate the star's quiescent spectral energy distribution, or SED. We also use the new data to plot the SED of the source in outburst and attempt to fit a black body curve to this data in order to estimate the increased thermal emission present in Assassin 13 dB. The results are shown in this figure. The red points indicate quiescent data and the best fit model from the fitting tool is shown in red. This model is a good fit to a class 2 young stellar object with a luminosity of roughly 0.1 solar luminosities, a mass of 0.15 solar masses, and an effective temperature of about 3100 Kelvin. The fitter gives accretion rate values varying between 10 to the negative 12 and 10 to the negative 10 solar masses per year at an age of roughly 3 million years, both consistent with similar young stellar objects in the literature. The outburst data, shown as blue points in the figure, are well fit by a 4855 Kelvin blackbody curve, shown as a blue dashed line. The near IR data are not as well fit by this curve, which implies that there is also likely increased emission from the star's circumstellar disk but we do not have the mid-IR data needed to fit a disk model. Integrating over this black body curve gives a lower limit to the luminosity and outburst of 0.2 solar masses. Using two separate methods, we calculate lower limits on the accretion rate and outburst of a few times 10 to the negative 8 solar masses per year. Since these are lower limits, we conclude that 10 to the negative 7 solar masses per year is a reasonable estimate of the accretion rate and outburst. This means that the star is accreting at a rate that is 3 to 5 orders of magnitude larger than in quiescence. 
Finally, we examined spectra of Assassin 13DB in greater detail and compared it to a large 2008 outburst of EX Lupi. In this figure, you can see a number of spectra obtained throughout the outburst. In all epics, the spectra are dominated by emission lines, with later epics showing stronger features. Some of the strongest features are identified in the December 3 mod spectrum, which also shows signs of an underlying red continuum appearing. These figures show continuum normalized spectra of Assassin 13 DB in red and blue, compared to a spectrum of the 2008 outburst in EX Lupi shown in black. All the identified features of the EX Lupi spectrum are present in the Assassin 13 DB spectra, but the Assassin 13DB spectra also show many features not present in the EX Lupi spectrum. Similarities between Assassin 13DB and XORs in literature lead us to conclude that Assassin 13DB is likely an XOR event. However, the outburst magnitude and the presence of several unique spectral features more closely resemble the 2008 outburst of EX Lupi than a traditional XOR event. In addition, SDSS J0510 also experienced a similar, previously unannounced outburst in late 2010, indicating it may be experiencing these large-scale events on a more rapid timescale than is typical for an XOR. It would also be one of the lowest mass T Tauri stars to ever host such an event. If you'd like to know more about this work, please see our paper which is posted on the archive. Thank you.